The ancient colonization of the European continent is a hotly debated subject. The samples exhibit high levels of diversity, however this variability decreases after the Neanderthal morphological pattern is attained. There are numerous issues to address in this video. Was the variation the result of multiple bottlenecking, hybridization, or both events? What was the scope of these events, was it global or regional? The extreme climate changes can likely be used to describe scenarios in which some populations become isolated, others become extinct, and the remaining populations become hybridized. During 200,000 or more years during this shift, the climate may have caused the extinction of multiple groups. In the meantime, hybridization between the remaining groups and new migratory movements into Europe may have occurred, explaining the physical similarities. One of the most complete and well-preserved Neanderthal skeletons ever found is Altamira Man. Yet, his petrified remains, which are buried at the bottom of a sinkhole close to the southern Italian town of Altamira, have remained inaccessible. It was there, more than 130,000 years ago, that he collapsed and starved to death. A human skull encased in a thick layer of calcite formations, was discovered in 1993 by a party of cave explorers in southern Italy. The remains are found in a location known as a cast borehole, where the growth of stalactites was aided by the presence of running water and limestone. For two decades, scientists did not attempt to extract the bones for fear of causing permanent damage. Because of this, archaeologists were only able to speculate about the person they called Altamira Man. Yet subsequent discoveries have revealed significantly more data than scientists had previously anticipated, rewriting important facts about this cave dweller. The demise of the Neanderthals was harsh hundreds of millions of years ago. Experts think he perished after getting stuck after falling into a natural well. They speculate that dehydration or malnutrition led to his death. Whatever the circumstances, his last resting place was preserved in a special geological way by the cave system where he fell. During time, his skeletal remains gradually fused into stalactites rich in calcite, resulting in his current embedded state, covered with limestone layers. The age of the remains has been conjectured to be ranging from 40,000 to 200,000 years for many years. His bones has never been removed due to his dangerous position, leaving only his head and a portion of one shoulder exposed. Prior to recently, researchers didn't have a lot of information to work with. They discovered that the stalactite in which the head is embedded dates from between 187,000 and 100, and 28,000 years ago using uranium thorium dating. Altamira Man is now the oldest Neanderthal bone sample to ever generate DNA as a result of these discoveries. What lies ahead for those attempting to unravel the mystery behind Altamira Man? To determine whether the DNA sample can be sequenced, they intend to test it. They anticipate that, if the DNA can be sequenced, it will provide important new information about Neanderthals and their role in the evolution of humanity. For researchers who have found the Neanderthals' current site to be largely inaccessible, these discoveries and their possible applications in the future are fantastic news. To get to the man trapped forever in the constrained caste system, you must descend on a 20-minute, claustrophobic journey through small crevasses. Of course, being inaccessible has its advantages. There is no longer the shaft he fell through first. A silt has filled it, and archaeologists are certain that the whole skeleton is present. In addition to DNA data, Altamira Man has shared unique information about his oral condition with researchers. They now know that he was a young adult who displayed symptoms of a dental condition. In contrast to other Neanderthal samples, which typically have excellent dental health and no missing teeth, he had deposits of calcified dental plaque and two missing teeth. Some researchers believe that in the future, technical developments will enable them to move past in situ analysis of the relics. Altamira Man could offer a wealth of fresh knowledge about a crucial branch of humanity's ancestral tree if he were ever to be securely removed. A three-dimensional rendering of the skull was finished in a recent work titled, Virtual Excavation and Analysis of the Early Neanderthal Cranium from Altamira. Entire Neanderthal skeletons are reportedly a nearly unprecedented discovery. The Altamira cranium's morphology is consistent with Neanderthal variability, despite the fact that it has traits found in older European samples. Some of these characteristics such as those found in fossil specimens dating from between 300,000 and 40,000 years ago, were never seen in Homo neanderthalensis. 
Given the date already determined, the morphology of Altamira suggests that the archaic traits it now possesses may have been brought on by the early Neanderthal groups, physical isolation from southern Italy. Until its DNA revealed that the Altamira skeleton is a Neanderthal, it was first believed to belong to Homo heidelbergensis. In the coming years, additional specimens may use the same Neanderthal assignment strategy. For example, the Italian soprano fossil, which dates back 400,000 years, also has significance for the development of Homo neanderthalensis. Archaeologists suggested that soprano is most likely around 450,000 years old, or the middle of the Middle Pleistocene, after clarifying its geostratigraphic, biostratigraphic, an archaeological relationship to a well-known and adjacent Acheulean site, dated to 487,000 years. The skull characteristics of the bone resemble both Homo erectus characteristics and those of subsequent species, such Homo heidelbergensis, which ruled Europe long before Homo neanderthalensis. According to a different study, it was related to Homo neanderthalensis. The human calvarium is more recent than previously thought, according to recent findings which suggests to a time period between 430 and 385,000 years ago. Thus, Soprano must be included in the Middle Pleistocene fossil record of Europe, despite the fact that its peculiar morphology, a singular combination of archaic and derived features, suggests a somewhat perplexing scenario of human evolution in Europe, and may have involved the occurrence of significant phonetic diversity at some point during the Middle Pleistocene. This argument focuses on the time period between one million and half a million years ago, when it is likely that a new type of humanity first appeared and spread throughout Africa and Eurasia. This humanity may be referred to as the polymorphic and widespread taxon Homo heidelbergensis, despite controversy whether seen as a single species. But during the Middle Pleistocene, other ancient human lineages thought to be related to Homo heidelbergensis are recognized supporting the identification of regional variants or subspecies. In this case, Soprano stands out as the most qualified candidate to describe the skull morphology of the ancestor variety of the last common ancestor species, which is still completely unknown. I get a little uneasy whenever I see the name Homo heidelbergensis. In 1908, a mandible discovered in Germany, close to Heidelberg, was classified as a new species called Homo heidelbergensis. Over the next 90 years, this mandible's 600,000-year-old age made it the oldest hominin fossil found in Europe. In the interim, the name Homo heidelbergensis remained unattached to any other fossil for seven decades before it was revived to attempt to categorize a collection of 20 or more Middle Pleistocene specimens found in Europe, Asia, and Africa. They all shared some Homo erectus traits, primarily a larger brain that is reflected in complex tools. In actuality, this species ought to have perished forever rather than being revived. Therefore, the Middle Pleistocene European specimens could be tentatively included in two or more branches of the Neanderthal clade, and the species Homo heidelbergensis should be eliminated from the hominin phylogeny. Furthermore, New genetic anomalies and discoveries may be the most fascinating of all the fruits of knowledge that have been harvested from this tree. The FOXP2 gene was first identified by geneticists as a genetic marker associated with language in contemporary humans. This directly implies that Neanderthals spoke, and that elaborate communication was possible, dispelling yet another myth about how primitive hominids were. The Neanderthal Y chromosome's successful sequencing resulted in more questions than it did answers. Scientists allegedly stated that this one specimen showed Neanderthals separated from a common human progenitor, 590,000 years ago based on the shaky interpretation of this single specimen. The Y chromosome of the Neanderthals was completely replaced by that of a population from which Homo sapiens is descended between 150,000 and 350,000 years ago, according to DNA studies. The modern human Y chromosome may have spread across the Neanderthal population due to a selective benefit when it was introduced through interbreeding more than 100,000 years ago. The Y chromosome of Neanderthals is significantly more closely connected to the Y of modern humans than it is to the Y of Denisovans, another archaic hominid that coexisted with Neanderthals in Eurasia. Contrary to the rest of the nuclear genome, which unambiguously identifies Neanderthals and Denisovans as sibling groups in a lineage that diverged from the ancestors of modern humans, this is a glaring contradiction. 
The Y chromosome data, which are the first from Denisovans and the first from Neanderthals with high coverage, indicate that earlier Neanderthals may have had a Y chromosome that was similar to Denisovans, but that this was eventually replaced by the Y chromosome of modern humans after Neanderthals interbred with them between 370,000 and 100,000 years ago. This study discovered that three different Neanderthal individuals, discovered at sites scattered across Eurasia and dating to periods tens of thousands of years apart, all carried modern human-like Y chromosomes. However, only a small percentage of the rest of the Neanderthal genome appears to be made up of modern human DNA. This shows that the Y was frequently replaced across the Neanderthal population. Researchers employed a variety of approaches to enrich for hominin DNA from samples of three relatively recent Neanderthal bones, all dating to less than 53,000 years ago, and two older Denisovans. They also created probes to selectively target Y chromosome sequences. The sequences were then compared to those from contemporary individuals of African and non African heritage. The researchers collected around 7 million base pairs of sequencing data for each archaic individual's Y. The fact that all three Neanderthal Y chromosomes are more closely connected to current human, or living human Y chromosomes than Denisovan Y chromosomes is what instantly caught our attention. The researchers weren't anticipating this, but this isn't the first time they've noticed this pattern. Neanderthals, mitochondrial genome, also shares more similarities with modern humans' mitochondrial sequences than it does with those of their sister species. It is amazing to see how the same narrative is revealed by both paternal markers, the Y chromosome and mitochondrial DNA. The mitochondrial DNA, mtDNA, of a very early Neanderthal population was discovered to be more comparable to the Denisovan mitochondrial genome through scientific analysis. A Denisovan-like mitochondrial genome was initially present in Neanderthals, but it was eventually replaced by mtDNA from an early lineage of modern humans that had moved from Africa to Eurasia and interbred with Neanderthals. There are many parts missing from the complex puzzle that is the evolutionary history of the human family. Nevertheless, as more fossils are discovered and their genes are examined, the picture is increasingly becoming clearer. Scientists were able to better understand the connections between modern humans, Neanderthals, and Denisovans thanks to ancient DNA. A sister group made up of the Denisovans in Asia and the Neanderthals in Europe split off from the lineage that gave rise to Homo sapiens approximately 700,000 years ago. Polarogeneticists found that the mitochondrial DNA of the oldest Neanderthal fossil, which was found in a Spanish cave and is thought to be around 400,000 years old, was more similar to that of the Denisovans. This shows that late hybridization with populations from whom modern humans are descended completely replaced the mitochondrial DNA of the Neanderthals. The same may be true for the Y chromosome which paleogeneticists estimate entirely replaced in Neanderthal populations between 150,000 and 350,000 years ago. Researchers found that this introduction of a modern Y chromosome into their gene pool, or what geneticists refer to as introgression, played a beneficial role for their survival by increasing genetic variability. Given the low genetic variability and small size of Neanderthal groups at the time, only a few dozen individuals. Polaroanthropologists are still quite cautious and prefer to conceive in terms of population rather than species when determining which species contributed the new Y chromosome. There were no modern people in Europe or Africa 350,000 years ago. The Neanderthal Y chromosome is genetically close to that of modern humans, indicating that it originated from populations that belong to the lineage that gave rise to Homo sapiens. There are two probable situations, according to scientists. It's possible that a population from whom modern humans are descended left Africa and stayed in Europe, where they interbred with Neanderthals, or that such a population already existed on both continents at the time this mixing occurred. Yet, there is no way to resolve the issue given the state of our knowledge. Therefore, Homo sapiens and Neanderthals share a mysterious male ancestor. It is well beyond the scope of this video to explain what all of this implies, but suffice it to say that it is unusual and does not fit with existing beliefs about Neanderthals, their purported origins, or their relationship to Homo sapiens.